<clears throat> do you see this little book here? We need to realize what the true Derek Hamishihistim is. That uh, we have to do more than just sing the Yehi, Aronenu, Marenu, Varabenu, Melech HaMoshiach, Le'olam Va'ed, which says basically live our master, teacher, and rabbi, King, Messiah, forever and ever. We have to do more than just sing that uh, because that declaration, uh, yes, it's true, uh, we want uh, emissaries to go out to the ends of the earth and preach the Kabbalah's Penem Moshiach, but they have to uh, preach the true Moshiach. Now, in the early days of the Derek HaMishahistim in Yerushalayim, while the Beis HaMikdash was still standing, these Torah observant Jews, they, they were zealous for the Torah, all 613 mitzvahs. And why were they zealous? Because they were filled with the Ruach HaKodesh and they could see Mashiach in every verse. Because he had shown them through the Ruach HaKodesh that he was in every verse. Every verse. Uh, and they, they were Jews, and their religion was Judaism. Now, yes, there were emissaries that went to the non-Jews to give them the truth, but the non-Jews were not, uh, they were not really privileged to come under the teaching of the Torah because the main thing about the Torah for the non-Jews and also for the Jews is the Aseris Hadebros. Uh, and I just want to show you this. In uh, Devarim. Uh, let me see if I can uh, put my finger on it right here. In Devarim. There is a, a, a scripture. The last verse of chapter 27. Arur. Do you see that? Cursed is everyone who does not uphold the words of this Torah to do them. So here's a curse. So you think that you're going to be saved by doing mitzvahs. Well, look, we want to do mitzvahs, but we don't depend on the mitzvahs. Because if we did, we couldn't do them all. I mean, look, have you ever gotten angry enough to kill somebody? Have you ever uh, uh, stolen something? Have you ever lied? Have you ever told a lie? Uh, the Aseris HaDebros, each one of these commandments has a death penalty reprisal. And that's why the Mashiach had to come to pay that debt for us, make the Kippura. He is our... Seir Azazel, who carries away our sins. He is our goal redeemer. Uh, he sets us right with God. My righteous servant will justify many. How does he do this? Well, there's an exchange. You see that word there, Arur? Well, look over here. Um, chapter... Uh, 21, uh, let's see here, uh, 21, uh, uh, actually it's talking about the, um, curse, uh, that's on everyone who's hanged on a tree. You see, this is, uh, 
verse 23 of uh, Devarim chapter 21. And uh, notice what it says here. You see that word etz? Do you see this this word here? Uh, Kelelat uh, Elohim. The curse of God. Anyone who's hanged on a tree. Do you see that word there? Tav, Lamed, Yod, final noon. So we thought he was accursed of God. Isaiah 53, I think it's verse 2. But he was wounded for our transgressions. You see, there's an exchange. There's a tamura. The goal takes our curse and uh, we take his righteousness. He is Moshiach Tzidkenu, our righteous Messiah. And notice in Isaiah 53, the Ohel of Rabbi Melech HaMoshiach is empty because the Lord prolongs his days. Do you see that? That means an empty tomb. Uh, and uh, you see the word uh, kever? He's in his kever, but then his days are prolonged. That can only happen if he has his tehiyas hamasim. Now, you have to understand this because Boaz, the goel, with uh, Elimelech, Elimelech had sinned. He had uh, given his uh, sons to pagan women in an unclean land without imunah that God could provide during a famine in Beit Lechem. So the goal of Beit Lechem, and by the way, Mashiach has to be born in Beit Lechem. He has to be born in the land of Boaz. If you have a, a Messianic claimant and he wasn't born in Bethlehem, I'm sorry, he's a Mashiach Sheker. Uh, let's get back to the Etz. In uh, Second Shmuel, uh, Avshalom ben Dovid is hanging on a, uh, an etz, and he's pierced on the etz. And this is what gives us peace. The Mavaser can run with the good news of peace when this happens, but only when Moshiach ben Dovid, it says, Shalomenu. Musar Shalomenu, go back and look at Isaiah 53. Musar Shalomenu Allah, the punishment that brought us peace, the chastisement that brought us peace was upon him. So if you want Yeshua's Elokeinu, uh, you have to uh, receive and welcome Moshiach. And... Uh, this is what I'm speaking about today. It's very important. Hu mechalal mipshayenu. He was pierced on account of our transgressions. He took uh, uh, the affliction of punishment for our sake. So when... Elimelech stands up alive vicariously through Boaz. He is receiving life, Haim. He is receiving his lost inheritance, and it's coming back to him. Uh, and uh, this is the glorious thing. This look at this Geula and Timura. He stands up alive vicariously through Boaz, and he receives Geula, and he re and and he receives Timura. Boaz is his stand-in, his substitute. Timura, he he 
gives he gives life and he takes uh, this uh, sinner Elimelech and raises him up as it says in Hosea chapter 6 verse 2 we will be raised up on the third day with him he will raise us up now this is not because of our merit this is this is because he is the true Ben Dovid. Miriam bought Eli, and you can see this uh, in the uh, Jerusalem Talmud. I have videos on this. Uh, ben Natan Ben Dovid and Yosef Ben Shlomo uh, Ben Dovid. And if it says uh, in in some in some places, uh, well, actually, it says, if he says this is my son, it is my it is his son. In other words, uh, if he adopts the son, then the the son is the heir, and that would mean that he would be the heir of the throne. That's on Joseph's side. But even according to the flesh, he was Ben Dovid. Now, he has the credentials. His ohel is empty. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the glory that we uh, are uh, talking about here. And remember, in Daniel chapter 3, verse 12, it says, Palam had had idols. That's what they low. It says they will not Palam had had idols. And uh, you get this again. Uh, here, uh, it's in uh, chapter 3, verse 18. Palam had had uh, the, the uh, image, the Zellum. Of the golden image, they will not. They will not. They will not worship. They will not pay lamed hat idols. They will not worship idols. But all peoples. Uh, if you just look uh, four chapters later, all peoples will pay lamed hat the bar enosh. You see that word bar? It means son. Uh, Mishle 30, verse 4. What is his son's name? You know, he threw the stars into the sky. But what is his son's name? Now, I want to show you something here that I think is extremely important. Only through God's word. Uh, where am I right here? This is... Uh, Artists for Israel International dot com. Let me see if I can get this in focus so you can see it. Only through God's word can we know God's salvation. Psalm 119, 81, 2 Timothy 3, 15. God's son, Proverbs 30, verse 4, the source of revelation, Proverbs 33 to 5, and love, Proverbs 8, 17, functioned as an aman, uh, a craftsman, a master builder, Proverbs 8.30, or creative wisdom at his side. He was with God as the source of creativity, Proverbs 8.12. Uh, and 8.22 and 8.30 as the source of love, Proverbs 8.17. And this Zunfunder Orbister took on flesh as the Zunfunder Orbister Messiah. So the uh, the the Mamar Memra is the Zunfunder Orbister, and he takes on flesh as the Zunfunder Orbister Moshiach. Psalm two verse seven, First Chronicles seventeen thirteen, Isaiah seven fourteen, Isaiah nine five to six. He is David's Adon. The Adon whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Malachi 3. 
Uh, so Psalm 110 verse 1, and whoever calls on the name of Ha'adon will be saved. Uh, Yoel chapter 2 verse 32, God's word, his son incarnated as the son of God, Messiah, has a prophesied name. His prophesied name is Yeshua, Ezra 3, 8, Yehoshua ben Yehotzadak, uh is the namesake. Uh, given through Messiah's namesake, Yeshua the high priest who made the Kippur in 516 BCE, ending the Golas of abandonment from God, Isaiah 54, verse 7, lasting 70 years from 586 to 516 BCE, Yeshua the Kohen after the order of Mel Melchizedek, Psalm 110, verse 4, who is who in his abandonment, Matthew 27, 46, made the Kippur, Ending our exile from God, our exile of sin and death. Uh, Matthew 1, verses 12 to 17. And this is why we pray and we receive him. We welcome him. Uh, and uh, this little book we're putting everywhere. It's a little Yiddish book and it tells you how to receive and welcome the Mashiach. And uh, I just want to uh, take you through this really quickly. Uh, just as there are physical laws that govern the physical universe, so there are spiritual laws that govern our relation with the Beshefer. Uh, and then uh, it says here, the plan of the Beshefer. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Now, I'm going to read this in English, but there it is in Yiddish. You can look at it. Artists for Israel International .com. scriptures. Elsewhere calls this a full and meaningful or abundant life. Why is it that most people are not experiencing the abundant life? Okay, the answer. Because every man is sinful. Every man is sinful from Het Kadmon. It is now between us and our Beshefer a great to home without any bridge. It is sin of my nature. This means Het Kadmon fall in me. Kohelet 729, see, this only have I found that Hael of Kim has made man upright, but they have sought out many schemes. For there is not a just man upon the earth that does good and sins not. Kohelet 7.20 The third law gives us the only answer to the dilemma, and the answer is the bridge of Harusashaft that the Beshefer made over the abyss of separation between mankind and Hashem. Okay, now I'm going to go to the uh, next page here. It's almost over. It's a short little thing. The Kapora and my Timura substitute. The Kapora and my Timura substitute. The Mashiach ben Dovid is the only provision of the Oibishter for the sin and Averos of mankind. Through him, you can have the experience of the love of Hashem and know the plan, his plan for your life. Hine, say Hayalokim. See the Lamb of Hashem. This is my substitute. This is my Kippura. This one goes to death and I go to life. Because all who rely on works of the Torah and on my own righteousness of the Torah are under a curse. For curses everyone that consents not in all 
that it stands written in the Sefer Torah to do it. Devarim 27, 26. And then I showed you 21, 23. But curse is everyone that, ha that hangs out of boim. Mashiach has become a curse for us. Mashiach's boim is our own. Mashiach carried our boim for us. You know, like the Sair Laazazel, uh, Leviticus 16, 22. Isaiah 53, he carried away, Nasa. He carried our boim for us and has become our bridge to Hashem, our tree of life, Etz Hayim, which was forfeited and and found in him. Uh, Baratheus 3.22, Baratheus 3.15. Moshiach and his restoration from the dead proves that the Kapora that Yeshua gave, his name is Yehoshua or Yeshua, is valid and desirable. The fact that he made his Tehiyas Hamasim validates uh, his Kippura, the Asham guilt, guilt offering that Isaiah 53 says he would make. And so it shows that it's valid and desirable to Hashem. Okay, then it says, Yet it pleased Hashem to bruise him. He hath put him to suffering. Then thou shalt make his nephesh an Asham offering for sin. He, that is Mashiach, shall see Zerah, Psalm 16, no shahat, Yohanan 1.12. He shall prolong his yamim, and the hefetz Hashem shall prosper in his, that is, Mashiach's hand. He will see of the travail of his, that is, Mashiach's nephesh, and shall be satisfied, the, the satisfaction uh, that is important from God's point of view might not be important to you, but it's important to God. By knowledge of him, Moshiach, that is, shall Tzadik Avdi, my righteous servant, uh, Zechariah 3.8, uh, 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 Jeremiah 23.5, Zechariah 6.11 and 12, Ezra 3.8, Yehoshua, Yeshua Shemo, he shall justify many, for he shall bear their avon. And this is Yitzhak im Hashem. This is to be justified through Hashem. Hashem would be unjust not to, to pay the paymaster's bill in the day of reckoning. It is not right, the paymaster, to withhold earnings on payday. The wages of sin is death. So death must be paid in just mercy. It's just, but it's also merciful. Moshiach paid our debt. Moshiach himself has carried away our sin in his body on the boim. He is our bridge to Hashem. You know, uh, Boaz had to pay. Uh, the, there was a kinsman redeemer who was nearer, but he would refuse to pay. Moshiach paid your debt. You cannot pay it with mitzvahs. It says in the Psalms, it would never be enough. Because he is our bridge to Hashem, the bridge of Havrusashaft. The Oivishter has not changed his blood atonement demand, Leviticus 17.11, but since the Hurban, Hashem has satisfied his demand for blood kapora from a later source. See Zechariah 13, 1, 1 Chronicles uh, 21, 17, Daniel 9, 24, 27, 2 Samuel 18, 9, and Zechariah 12, verses 8 to 10. Now, one more page here. Identification of the coming of Moshiach. He must be a descendant of David. And I've shown you how he is. He must be born in Bethlehem. Now, if you find something in the Mishnah that says, uh, if he does this and if he does that, well, that's enough. Or if you find something in rabbinic literature that says, you know, look, he only has to do this, then he's the Ben David. No, 
No, we don't go by that, friend. The Word of God was given, and we're going to go by the Word of God. Moshiach's nature is divine. Isaiah 9, 5 and 6, Psalm 2, 7, Proverbs 8, 22, 30, verse 4, Psalm 110, verse 1, Malachi 3, 1, Daniel 7, 13 and 14, Daniel 3, verse 18. This has to do with palach, the Aramaic word, which means worship as, as deity. Tanakh prophesied Mashiach to stand up alive from the dead, Isaiah 53, 10 to 12, Psalm 16, 9 to 10. If you have a Mashiach moldering in the grave in Old Montefiore Cemetery, he hasn't stood up alive from the dead. And I'm talking about a physical resurrection. Mashiach comes before the destruction of the Second Temple. So anybody who's uh, claiming to be the Mashiach now is really a Johnny come lately. Because if you look at Daniel 9, 24, 27, you see the terminus aquem is 70 CE, before the destruction of the Second Temple. Mashiach's name of portent is prophesied to be Yeshua. If your candidate for Mashiach has the name Menachem, it may uh, do well as far as the Mishnah is concerned, but it's not going to do well as far as the Scriptures are concerned because Zechariah 3, 8, Zechariah 6, 11, and 12 Revelation 22.16 in the Orthodox Jewish Bible says that the Zemach is Yehoshua, Yeshua. There's only one man in history that in him is fulfilled all these prophecies. We don't depend on feelings, the reliability of Hashem, uh, of his word, the Bible, not our feelings, is our authority. The believer lives by faith in the reliability of Hashem and his word. There's a uh, picture of a train with uh, the caboose at the end. And uh, it shows, um, the, it illustrates the relationship between fact, that is Hashem and his word, and faith, emunah, our trust in God and his word, and feeling the result of our faith and obedience. Uh, you, the train will run with or without the caboose. However, it would be useless to attempt to pull the train by the caboose in the same way as believers. We do not hang on feelings or emotions, but we rely on our uh, on the trustworthiness of God and the promise of His Word and our faith in in in, in the in the Rock. Uh, now, there's more here, and you can look at it. But the purpose of life is to have Havrusashaf with the Beshefer. Now, if you are studying the Mishnah night and day, and you believe that Rabbah, that Rabbah can bara a Gavra, a Gever, a Gever, a man, if you believe that Rabbah can make a golem, uh, then uh, why not why not believe that the word can make a new a new creature, a Briah Hadashah, that the word can become flesh and make your kapora, that the 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 Mahamar Mimra could do that. Uh, this is what you have to believe. Now, I want you to look here at the um, at the Orthodox Jewish Bible, and I, I want you to uh, think just for a minute. It says in uh, Lucas that. Uh, did you not know? Was it not necessary? Look at this. For the Ribi Melech HaMashiach to suffer these things and to enter into his kavod, his glory. And having begun from Moshe Rabbeinu and from the Nevi'im, he explained to them in all the Kitve HaKodesh the things concerning himself. And then it gives some references. But I want to tell you something. The early Messianic Jews, the Mishihistim 
of the first century, before the Horban, while the temple still stood in Jerusalem, they were zealous for the Torah. Uh, it says that in, I think it's Acts chapter 21. And they were zealous for the Torah, not because they thought their merit would uh, grant them salvation, or that uh, they could, um, by doing mitzvahs, impress God so much that God would have to give, uh, he would be obligated to let them into heaven. No, they did not depend on the mitzvahs. They depended on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, and that is, uh, we're talking about the Kitve HaKodesh, now, uh, this is important, and what I want to talk to you about was, uh, is this. He came to his own, and his own were not Mechabel. They were not accepting the, Kabbal the Kabbalist Hamalchus of him, Isaiah 53.3. But as many as him, Lechabel, Penei Moshiach, receive him as Moshiach, to them he gave the tokef, the validity, to become, in fact, Yeladim of Hayalokim. And you should look at Devarim chapter 14, verse 1. He gave this tokef to the ones whose being born was not by the agency of natural descent, you know, I come from a long line of rabbis. Nor by the ratzon of the basar, the fallen human nature. You know, I, I just wanted to make a decision. Well, friend, uh, it's great for you to want to make a decision, but your fallen human nature cannot decide to do the right thing. Nor by the ratzon of a gever, a male. In other words, your father made this decision. Rather, to the one born of God. You must be born of God. And the Devar Hashem took on Gafaniyut, corp corporeality, and made his Mishkan among us. So he was born, Nisan 1, 3760, uh, and... We, that's the emissaries, gazed upon his kavod, the Shekhinah of the Ben Yahid from Elohim Ha'av, full of Hashem's Hesed, the Emes. And he made the uh, the Hagba, the, the 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 word was lifted up. Uh, the Histalkus, the uh, Tehias Hamoshiach, when he made this 3793, 33 years later. And the eyewitnesses wrote it down. Why did I write this book? 1974. Why did I translate this Lubavitcher Bible? Because Jewish people, once their eyes are open, once the blindness of unregeneration has been cut away by the Messer Moil knife of the Ruach HaKodesh, the downward pull the blindness, the obstinacy, what Moshe Rabbeinu spoke about when he said, don't say that when I give you this, this, this inheritance that, that uh, it was because of your righteousness, because you are a stiff-necked, obstinate people. And the same word there is used regarding Pharaoh. Here was Moshe Rabbeinu speaking to Pharaoh and Pharaoh was hearing every word that he was saying, the words that would be written down in the Torah. And yet, 
because of the obstinacy of his heart, he was not receiving the word. You must receive the word who became flesh. If you do not receive him, you will have no part in the redemption and in the resurrection. And this is why all over the world people are being martyred. All over the world uh, emissaries are going to the ends of the earth preaching the Basura Saga Allah. Would you pray with me right now and make this reception, this welcoming of the Ribi Melek HaMoshiach. Would you open your heart and your eyes and your ears and thank him for what he did for you, the agony. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He took the abandonment, which is Gehinom, which is the outer darkness, he took it in your place for you so that you will never see that second death. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yes. If you confess him before men, he will confess you before Elohim Ha'av. Amen.